just when I have never been sick before, I suddenly got very sick. My body is in shambles from the illness. Still, my husband insisted that I help him with the restaurant that he runs. Moreover, he wanted me to take care of my mother-in-law, who moved in while I was in the hospital. People who do nothing but go for some money should get out. When I couldn't move as much as I used to, he called me useless, and finally, he sent me away to my daughter's place. I wonder who will regret it, though, if he thinks he has forced some useless old hack to his daughter. I'm Noma, 55 years old. I have been married to my husband, who runs a restaurant for 30 years. At first, I was a bit confused, but I enjoyed serving customers at the restaurant because I like to talk with people. However, I suddenly became very ill after having worked very hard without any illness. You've been working so hard all your life. You should take a rest. Jade, our only daughter, said to me. But my husband didn't seem to think so. The restaurant had been run by my husband Gerald and me for many years. It was originally started by my father-in-law but he passed away early. My husband took over the business at a young age. When we were busy, we managed to run the shop with the help of my mother-in-law and our daughter. After I was hospitalized, they decided to close the store for a bit. There are no other employees, and it would be impossible for my husband to keep the store open by himself. My mother-in-law is old, and Jade is married and runs her own shop with her husband Shane, so she can't afford to help us right now. After the surgery, I was discharged from the hospital, but the treatment is still going on. The side effects of the treatment have taken a toll on my body. If I go home, I will be able to relax for a while. That's what I thought. But when I came home after leaving the hospital, my mother-in-law was there. It was not as if she was going to stay temporarily. In the room on the first floor, which had been reserved for visitors, there were sleep boxes of her things that had not been opened yet. There was even a drawer. Clearly, she intends to live here. I had expected that she would come to my house sooner or later, since she is over 80 years old and lives alone. But I was surprised that she would start living with me without Gerald consulting me while I was in the hospital. My husband is serious and skilled, but he is uncompromising. He also has a mother complex. He listened to whatever my mother-in-law says. I guess she took advantage of my absence this time and moved in. You are moving in, mother? What are you going to do with your house? I asked her. What's wrong with wanting to live with my precious son for the rest of my life? She answered. My mother-in-law's words are troubling me. Just the two of you? That's right. I thought you'd never come back. Although I had suffered from a serious illness, I had pushed through the surgeries and treatments with the sole intention of getting well and standing in the store once again. But my mother-in-law's words pierced my heart. I can't believe she thought that. As soon as I was discharged from the hospital, my husband immediately opened the store. I was still under treatment, and the side effects were such that I was in no condition to move. I have no appetite. I have lost weight, and my strength is low. But my husband demanded me to work at the restaurant and to take care of my mother-in-law. The restaurant does not have a residence, and we live only a few minutes' walk from the store. Even though it takes only a few minutes, it is hard for me to just go there. I can serve customers with a smile on my face, and when I come home, I spend a lot of time to prepare meals for my mother and do laundry. But I can't even manage to clean the house. When I did so, my mother-in-law yelled at me. How long are you going to make me wait? You are starving me to death. Can't you do the laundry? You are not getting rid of the dirt. 
How do you clean your room? There is dust everywhere. I can't sleep in this mess. She comes in here without permission and says whatever she wants to say. I told her that she should take care of herself since she is still in good health even though she is in her 80s. And when I told her so, she got upset. What a pity! What an inconsiderate daughter in law to an old person like me! When my husband came, my mother in law made more fuss. Gerald, please don't leave me alone with your wife! She torments me! What? Of course not! But my husband, who loves my mother in law, won't listen to me and only listens to what she says. I can't help but think that my mother in law knows that. So she's saying it on purpose. I'm still in treatment too. I just need more rest. I can't work at the store and take care of your mother at the same time. I just told her to do what she can by herself. It's your fault you got sick. What? You got sick because you don't take care of yourself. Do you know how much money we spent on medical bills? Because we didn't have enough insurance. My husband doesn't like that I got sick and spent money. I could only get a medical insurance with little coverage because my husband was stingy in paying the premiums. We don't have any more money to pay for your treatment. You're on your own. By do it yourself, I mean the story is a two man operation. Then stop the treatment. No way. I don't feed people who don't work. What are you talking about? We don't need you anymore. I will hire a part timer and mom will help out too. What? What do you mean? We've kept the store together for years. Why are you saying that? What's the point of working together if you can't work? If you are healthy and able to work, I will let you live here. But I won't if you don't do anything and all you do is cost me money. And so, my husband confronts me with the divorce papers. Let's get divorced. Finally, we have no one to bother us. My mother in law was laughing beside my husband. I grabbed the divorce papers from my husband and ran out of the house. I had nowhere to go when I ran away, but I did it on the spur of the moment. I couldn't go back after being told of that. I might as well call an ambulance and be hospitalized again. What the heck am I thinking? Fortunately, I have many friends. Don't worry, I can manage. I don't have money, so I will just sit in the rest area of the local supermarket drinking free water. When I was thinking like that, I was called by a voice Mom! I turn around and see my daughter Jade approaching me with her card. What's wrong? Are you okay? I almost cried seeing my daughter. It seems that when my body doesn't work as it should, my heart weakens too. Mom, did you walk here? Don't push yourself yet. I'll walk you home. Thank you. You know, I can't go home. What? What do you mean? I got kicked out of my house. What? What does that mean? Who would do that? Your father and grandmother. Grandma is here? She moved in with your dad. But still, why did they kick you out? My medical bills are too expensive and I'm useless, so the store will be run by a part timer and your grandma. What's that? That's impossible. The restaurant isn't more important than my mother's health. Jade gave me a ride in her car, and I returned to my house. My husband answered the door when Jade called him. What are you and Grandma thinking? Why are you kicking out my mother who is not feeling well? I'm going to live with my mother from now on. He just answered flatly. My husband has always been stubborn, he never changes his mind. This is your and mom's house. Why'd grandma come here? Grandma is too old. She can't be left alone. Why can't mom stay here? Grandma doesn't want to be with Noma. 
Noma can live here because she bullies grandma and she can't do the housework or work in the restaurant. Mom picks on grandma? You're being paranoid. She just don't like mom, that's all. Besides, she can't work because she's sick. She's not only useless, but she spends all our money. In that case, Jade, your useless mother should go live with you. Jade looks at me and smiles. Mom, you're coming home with me today. What? But that's not good. And I wonder what Shane would say. You don't have to worry about it. I want you to come. Shane is not cold-hearted like that. And so, I ended up at Jade's house. Jade's house was cozy. The second floor is sunny and breezy. They have a store where they sell handmade food on the first floor. So people come and go, and you can hear them talking, but it is not so noisy. Since Jade and Shane live mostly on the first floor, they told me that I could freely use the second floor. Shane is also very kind to accept me. They worry about me, but does not talk too much about it and leave me alone sometimes, so I can spend my days in a relaxed manner. Thanks to them, my physical condition is getting better and I have a good appetite. Then, I felt like moving. I put on an apron and stood in the kitchen of their shop. Jade is surprised and said, You don't have to do that, Mom. Thank you. Now that I'm feeling a lot better, I feel like moving around a little. Let me help you if I can. Okay, I will take it easy on you. Jade laughed and told me what to do. She has a chef's license and has worked in a company cafeteria before she got married. I like both cooking and talking with people, so I enjoy doing that at their shop. When I could afford it, I would cook meals for our family of three, much to Jade and Shane's delight. Your cooking has always been delicious. Thank you. By the way, Jade, don't you ever want children? I didn't know if this was the right question to ask so directly, but I suddenly thought how nice it would be to have grandchildren here. Jade paused for a moment. Was she offended? But it wasn't that. We do want kids. Shane likes kids too, but not in this economy. Your shop isn't doing so well? From what I can see, it's getting some customers. Hmm, just selling regular stuff. We are a cheap food shop, but prices are going up and up and up. And I'm afraid if we raise the prices, we'll lose customers. I thought I could do something to help Jade and Shane, who were so kind to accept me during my struggle with illness, even though I was sure they would be good parents. I continued to help with the cooking and serve the customers. Little by little, I spent more and more time in the store. The shop is located in a residential area. During lunchtime, many employees from nearby offices buy food here to take to their workplaces. But in the evening, people who live by themselves and housewives who work come to buy to eat it at home. LA customers who live in the neighborhood also come often. However, they were all concerned about the salt and sugar content. They said that they wanted to eat more of our food, but they were trying to eat less. It is true that ready-made food contains a lot of salt and sugar. It may be risky for those who need to restrict their diet. I came up with an idea. I have tried to make homemade food with less salt and sugar by adding fish stock and lemon juice. I thought it might be bland and boring, but it turned out to be surprisingly popular. I suggested to Jade and Shane that we change direction. I felt that I shouldn't interfere in the way you run your shop, but I thought it might work. Both Jade and Shane listened to me carefully. I think it's very good. We never would have thought of that. I'm so glad you came here. I can't believe you are able to put your experience with your illness to good use here. That's my mom. You turn anything into profit. 
Jade was laughing half jokingly, but her eyes were serious. I can't fail if I'm going to be allowed to do this. I came up with new menu items, one after another. In fact, while I was in the hospital, my body was in pain and I had nothing to do, so I was making recipes to overcome my illness. I made some recipes that were easy to eat, even if I had no appetite due to the side effect of medicines or painful mass ulcers, and some that could boost my immune system and restore my strength. I also tried to come up with menus that would help to improve the condition of the stomach and menus that are good for weight loss and beauty. We use organic and additive free ingredients and we also try to use natural ingredients. We make food that is good for both the body and the mind. Although the cost will be higher, I have tried to purchase as much as possible from my acquaintances at low prices. I had my original acquaintances, but I was fortunate to have made many friends during my hospital stay because of my talkative nature. Some of them were growing pesticide-free vegetables, and I was able to purchase from them. The strategy was a great success. With the increasing health consciousness in the world, many customers started to come to the store. Our reputation spread by word of mouth and some people even came from far away. In addition, some customers came to consult with me about their health, so I suggested ready-made food suited to their needs. Sometimes, I made special lunches even if they were not on the menu. As I was busy every day, my body became more and more energetic. Then one day, my husband who heard about our shop came to see me. No, my ex-husband. The divorce was already final. Hey, Noma, why are you working at Jay's shop? If you can do the job, why don't you work at my restaurant? Hey, don't yell at me in front of the store. I'm better now that Jade and Shane let me rest. I just want to return the favor. And since you're no longer a part of this, please leave. Jade from the kitchen heard the commotion and came out too. Dad, what are you doing here? Did you come to buy mom's handmade food for lunch? They are very popular. You've got to be kidding. How dare you steal Noma away from my restaurant? Huh? You're the one who kicked mom out. I didn't kick her out. You served her with divorce papers, right? Well, you know. My mother said, If grandma told you to, would you kick out a sick person? It was you who told me to take mom in. Anyway, if she can do the job, she can work in my restaurant. Dad, what happened to the restaurant? He shut his mouth and looks from his left to right. You have a part-timer, don't you? I thought grandma was going to help you. No, that's... I mean... I could see why he was so bashful. Who would want to work part-time for a stubborn and overbearing owner? Your part-timers don't come to work, don't they? And even if they did, they would quit right away, wouldn't they? That's... Jade knows her that well. Didn't Grandma help you? Well, a little at first. His voice is getting quieter. It must have been hard for your mother to work at the store with her declining cognitive functions. How do you know that? My husband looked at me surprised when I said that. It's true that she has always been a strong-willed person and has often pushed me around, but I thought it was a little strange for her to talk to me like that. But you didn't realize that, and you were just doing your mother's bidding. Well, you know, I mean... Dad, do you think you've been running the restaurant by yourself? It was with mom's help that made it possible. Being able to cook isn't enough to run a restaurant. There's also managing sales and customer relations. She's done all the things you couldn't do. And instead of thanking her, you kick her out. Mom is an integral part of our business. She can't go to your restaurant now. You don't care what happens to my restaurant? 
I don't care what happens. Just quit. What the? You can't even take care of your sick wife. So why would people come to such a place? I wish that kind of restaurant would go away. In the end, my husband left quietly because of Jay's bravery. After that, I went back to my former house to pick up my belongings, but I never went near there again. According to what I heard, my mother-in-law was hospitalized for the same disease as mine. I heard that she was so selfish that she was giving the nurses at the hospital a hard time. And my husband closed the restaurant because he couldn't run the business by himself after all. He has been looking for a new job, but he can't find one because he has been a stubborn person for many years. He is now trying to make ends meet somehow. As for me, I enjoy my job at the shop, and every day is fulfilling. The secret to my energy is that I can talk with many customers. I can't believe I used to be sick. And I have another good news. My daughter and her husband, who have come to think positively about having a child, started planning and had a baby in no time at all. Now I'm planning a lunch menu for pregnant women and for my daughter who is pregnant. I am thinking of making meals for my grandchildren when they are born.